Well, I think it is exploring what an urban farm of the future can and could look like. Mm. So I'm really keen to have conversations with uh, both communities, but also um, people from the universities, from other urban farms around the country, around the world, mm. about what the future of urban farms could look like. Yes, uh, I mean, it's a constantly developing organisation. I, I always remember in, in my early years, I used to talk about a multifaceted organisation, and it is. Education isn't the only uh, thing. The social side, there's the cultural side. The, the, uh, you see, as we've grown, I mean, we've acquired the area which is now the woodland, uh, the, uh, which we've created, you see, over the far mm -hmm. side. Uh, education in itself can ch uh, change and become different facets. I mean, who'd have thought when we first started we'd be having large lumps of rock to represent uh, uh, millions of years of development of the earth, but uh, we have now. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I, uh, we. I think we are now very much an accepted part of the community and I trust that uh, uh, we'll continue to be. Uh, we can't live on our laurels, uh, there's always the funding problems, uh, but uh, I, I'm confident that we would overcome any difficulties that arise in the future. On, on community, I have a story really about community. Um, I often tell taxi drivers while you're talking small talk, they ask you, what's your, what's your job? And as somebody's out of work, that's a really hard question actually mm. to, to be asked because you have a number of answers, some of which are quite shameful. Um, but what I have started saying now that I come to the farm so often um, is that I work here and they always, 99% of the time, they say they have brought their children here. And this is just random taxi guys, not, not locals particularly. Um, a lot of them are very recent immigrants. Um, and yet the, the farm remains a social touch point for this group of people um, that they can relate to. It's, it's a physical connection between, between some very different people. Ah, I've never, never really been abroad and they've only recently come to this country and, and we've both brought nephews, children, daughters and sons to the farm. And so I volunteered, I joined the committee and there were all sorts of other people on the committees, like a probation officer and other people. Um, and it, it took two years of negotiation before, first of all, we had to find the site. And I can remember uh, standing uh, in what is now the cafe, looking up at the sky through the broken roof and thinking, well, this will make a beautiful farmyard. What's your name? Dave. Yeah, and what have you been doing here? Uh, the past, how, for however long you've been here? I can't remember. You, 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 you. Do you want me to fill it, fill, fill yeah. in for you? What, what were you doing this week? What were you doing this morning? Um, at the farm. We can, uh, I was doing apple juice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you make really nice apple yeah. juice. Thank you. It was really tasty. Mm -hmm. Dave's the only person on our team 
who's here every day at tw- well, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you been coming here? How long have you been coming every day for like a few years? Yeah. What do you do? Just kind of all sorts? Yeah. Good at weeding, aren't you? Yeah. Good at clearing pot, keeping plants mm-hmm. tidy. And this is Dave's 20th anniversary at the farm. Dave's been there 20 years. <laughs> We've got all the stuff, got all the stuff um, stolen from the farm. Yeah, we've got some sweet corn and the and next minute, gone. Oh, wow. It's good for you, it's good for your mental well being, you know, it calms people down, calms children down, calms young people down, calms autistic people down. Mm-hmm. So there's all that um, fresh air, getting tired, uh, being in close contact with nature, stroking farm animals, building up relationships with animals. It's all good therapy for you for your mental health as well as your physical health. So that's why City farms are important, like this one. On one level, I really like the fact that there's other staff here and other volunteers here who've been coming for a long time and hearing, you know, it's very much like the founder lived experience. People remember it in this way and everyone has a different story to tell. So I really enjoy listening to everyone's story and then make, you know, it becomes like this web of different web of experiences. I like hearing what, you know, it sounds like everyone's also done like every member of staff including the security guard has done everything in the farm in some way so they've done some gardening and some farming so it's really interesting for me to hear a a now officially security guard's perspective on farming because that and i think that's quite unique about the farm is that everyone has a a large set of skills um, not restricted to their job description and that can be really it can be, it's really great because then um, everyone has a shared purpose with the shared skills because everyone likes doing all the same things I suppose so there's like lots of com- I like the fact that there's lots of common interest between everyone here we all obviously like growing we all obviously like the social aspect of the farm so there's like a camaraderie in it I feel it I felt it from the first day that I was here like people's deep like attachment to the farm I like that on the other hand that can be very like you know on me- on some levels can create a lot of conflict mm-hmm. as people are so attached to it that they you know change becomes uh, difficult yeah then there are certain realities with the farm now especially because it's funding has been cut back that um, it must undergo a period of change and yeah it's understandable that it can be traumatic for people mm. It's traumatic for me to see how traumatic it, traumatic it is for some people, mm. in some ways. Mm. But I also, very strange way, get a little bit of a kick out of that. Because it reminds me of myself as well, and how much it's hard, how hard it is for me sometimes to accept change as well. Mm. I just have the luxury of not having, I've come here so recently, mm. that I don't come with all the baggage. I will develop lots of baggage, I assure you. 
you'll be precious about a tree eventually. <laughs> yeah. Those apple yeah. trees will be your babies in a few years. Exactly, yeah. Well, I think it's having a resource and remembering that this is a like a, a an oasis just a mile out of the city centre of Leeds mm -hmm. is absolutely amazing, and it's a real um, a place that people who wouldn't have the chance to experience the natural environment. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't get out into the countryside for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, and part of the key objective of the charity has always been to link uh, both individuals and communities who wouldn't get the chance to experience the natural world, to experience animals, to experience growing things. I mean, I've always thought we should be um, kind of groundbreaking in ideas, trying out wacky ideas. Um, so this building we're in right now, uh, you know, I. We started working on it in the early 90s um, and it was finished in 1999 after all the fundraising and meetings and <clears throat> uh, and finally it got when it started to get built um, but um, the county or the council managed it they thought oh crackers you know I think putting this amount of insulation in the walls and using this special double glazing and having a condensing boiler thinking oh, What's all this stuff? You know, this is crackers. And of course, that all that stuff now is mainstream. Every new house has to have these things in it. So, and you know, back back in the eighties, we were growing organic veg. Nobody ever heard of it. They just thought it was something for hippies. And now it's in every supermarket. So, I'd like to see us continue with that. Um, you know, bringing things into the mainstream, which we think. Uh, should be done to, you know, become more sustainable. So I can't really walk very far. I have to have a scooter. I, I drive my scooter around the farm and there hasn't been a single person, a single employee or service user or guest who has questioned my need to have that. Somebody helped me work out how I could take cargo on it. And we worked out this morning how mm. I could hitch the trolley that we used to harvest to my scooter. Mm. And I occasionally have to lie down in the field and take a break. Do you think anybody minds? Nobody minds. Mm. Nobody minds. So instead of being stuck without a job, without something to do, I have been able to come here and be helpful, to be worthwhile, to grow food, to be, have conversations, to help with the service users and that's an incredible amount of trust I've been granted and an incredible amount of assistance that I've been granted and I do my best to, to pay them back by <laughs> weeding and picking potatoes and whatever and I can't, I couldn't be more grateful. Obviously we have foxes and um, we know because it's a green, the green corridor, I mean Leeds is very good on that, it's got a lot of green corridors, you know what I mean by that, a, a green link so animals can move from South Leeds all the way up to North Leeds and travel, they've, they've got links, um, that's why we're always battling to stop developments 
destroying green links. Um, you know, along motorways, you often have a green link so that animals are safe, they don't have to go on roads and things. Uh, and Leeds is particularly good on that as a, a council city, so that's good. So we are um, a part of the green link that goes right up to the country. Um, you know, the Meanwood walks and, and lanes and things, so you can go right up. So we do know that animals use it as well as people, uh, yes. Um, it's really interesting having coming to a project which has a lot of existing infrastructure but has been kind of not used and then figuring out how everything works without much of without much input from people before but seeing through the stuff that I find what people have been trying to do mm. that's been quite interesting also been quite disconcerting because you can see a number of repeats of people trying the same thing and not working and then giving up and it suffers from a meaningful transition from one person to the next. Is that the next video? Yes. Yeah, that's mm -mm. that's Leo. Oh, no. Hello, Leo. Yeah. Lost it. <laughs> Did have another video of it. Of when it was just being. That's no, not. That's just you guys working on the table. Oh, scrub, scrub. <laughs> I can't believe that was in February. <laughs> We're pulling in. I swear I had another one. That's right. It's a big tractor demolishing the building. Oh, that's good. Oh, wow. Time almost there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ben says. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah. Mm, that's Dave Cox in the background. Mm -hmm. They had to break the door down at one point, didn't they? So that's the key. Oh, yeah. uh, I did, did have another video. I'm sure oh, it'll well. turn up at some point. I don't know, I, th I think something else probably about the farm is it's, um, it is a community um, organisation. So the way it started, it was just volunteers who started it up. So the community's always been involved in it and it's evolved like that. You couldn't really get, if you wanted this, this um, in your city, 
uh, as some kind of silver bullet to solve lots of problems that we, we help with in, in the poor parts of the city. You couldn't just drop this into a city, it won't work. Uh, you, need, you have to grow this with the community and they have to be involved in it and they have to see it as theirs. Because otherwise um, it would just get taken apart. You know, um, in the early days we had lots of trouble with vandalism and crime and stuff like that. But those have mostly gone now because most of the families have come through the farm in one way or another. So they see it as theirs and then they see it, they see it like that and they protect it. So that's, that's quite a good point for a community organisation like this. There was something quite a while ago where we had piglets kept on escaping through the bars of their enclosure, um, which we worked on over time. We managed to get them to stay in, but when they were really small, they kept on managing to slip through. And I kept on having dreams about them escaping and rounding them up again. And Because um, it can be quite a lot of fun. The public definitely enjoys seeing that sort of thing. I have had like more like daydreams, like living dreams. Sometimes, especially on, on my own here, I can just walk around and imagine things appearing, which is kind of like a half hallucination <laughs> state. And I quite enjoy doing that, going around. Relaxing yeah. reality. And active dreaming, mm -hmm. active conscious dreaming. Yeah. Just like imagining certain scenarios here or things that might be here, like structures or whatever. I like round houses. I'm not sure how other people like round houses, but they're beautiful structures. I can imagine an outdoor classroom far away in the copse somewhere and use that as like another base. It'd be beautiful. I can, like, I get, again, I, I, I get really excited about just thinking about how much energy has gone into it and how much more energy could go into it. Like it could easily have a, it could go on, could continue to develop for 40 more years and see where, see where it gets to. Yes, I might be grey, white, white bearded old man still being here. Might, yeah, we'll see.